the 38 Special versus the 357 Magnum. We're talking wheel gun cartridges today on the Ammunition Guides podcast. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, we're going to talk about two of my favorite pistol cartridges. 38 Special was developed because the 38 Long Colt wasn't powerful enough to blast through Filipino Moro warrior shields during the Spanish American War. And the 357 Magnum was developed because a certain very charming hand loader thought the 38 Special was just too weak. Yeah, uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, the man you're referring to there is Elmer Keith, probably one of the fathers of the Magnum uh, Revolution here in the uh, in the United States. But guys, I got to tell you before we get into this real quick, if you like revolver cartridges or you like shooting anything out there, guys, you got to get your ammo at ammo.com. Make sure you click that link down below in the description. Get your free twenty dollar off coupon. That's a special gift to all of our subscribers and anybody who watches our video. And uh, get yourself some ammo a little bit cheaper than what you'd pay normally but yeah Dave you're absolutely right originally 38 special came from the 38 long colt uh and which was a black powder round and initially we don't hear about it all anymore no you're absolutely right and the other thing that you don't mention too often is that the 38 special itself was a black powder round when it first uh you know came out yeah I think it has a lot more case than it actually needs for that reason it really does and this is something that you know as a reloader uh, I'm pretty uh you know familiar with but if you don't reload this may not be something that you know of the especially with modern loads for 38 special there's not a whole lot of powder in that cartridge because smokeless powder has so much more pressure uh, and uh, let's see, I have it here. Uh, the new 38 Special was loaded with 21 grains of black powder versus, and I have the Lyman reloading manual in front of me, typically like around, oh, about four or five grains of smokeless powder. So quite a bit different, uh, quite a bit of difference, I should say, between those two cartridges as opposed to, you know, smokeless and black powder. Segwaying into that, it's it's this power evolution, right? It's like so, uh, you know, the cavalry was having problems with these wooden shields. You get it? Yeah. Uh, you think a hardened wooden shield, nothing's going to stop that. It was able to stop 38 Long Colt, which is surprising. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those things. It's like we have a round, we think it's good enough, and we get into a battle situation, and it's not. And so they come back with something better. The uh, 38 Special was able to load three more grains of black powder, and that was enough to push it through. But then, you know, a little while later, we have Elmer Keith show up, and he's like, well, hey, we've got this huge case on this 38 Special, and we're only using like a fraction of it. Let um, me look here. The case capacity on the 38 Special is 23 grains, and we're sticking like four grains of powder in there. I think mm -hmm. we can do a little bit more. Basically, he was all about getting as much as much power into these uh, these special cartridges that he could. And, and he was satisfied with the 357 at first, but eventually mm -hmm. kind of even badmouthed it in favor of the 44 Magnum, which he also was instrumental in developing. You know, again, it's just like the th story for the 38 Special, the 357 Magnum was because we needed something more powerful. And so it was 1934 when the 357 came out. And uh, like I said, these bootleggers were wearing uh, new forms of body armor, which is basically just... Uh, metal if I'm not mistaken and uh, you know they were able to uh, the 38 couldn't do it but the 357 had enough speed and power behind it and when you're dealing with body armor and cartridges and things like that speed kills uh, and speed is one thing that the 357 has on its side uh, bullet weights aside, that muzzle velocity is really the defining performance difference between these two rounds, isn't it? No, Dave, you're absolutely right. It's a huge difference between the 38 Special and the 357 in terms of muzzle velocity. With, uh, you know, the 38 Special, with as long as we're talking about the normal loads, not the plus P, and we'll talk about that in a minute, we're looking about a thousand feet per second or less, with most of them airing on the or less side. Whereas 357 Mag, um, we're talking like. 1,200, 1,500 feet per second with some lows, and that is quite a bit of difference. Yeah, so the 357 mags muscle velocity is pretty much on par with kind of a hot 115 grain, that is to say lightweight bullet, 9 millimeter load, but a lot bigger bullet. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, you can 
sling these 357 mags out like 150 grain bullets uh that's pretty big and those things are hitting at about 400 foot pounds of energy that's nothing to you know wave a stick at while the 38 special only getting about 200 foot pounds at the top yeah. end and to give you some context the minimum recommended impact energy for self-defense usually falls within 220 to 300 foot pounds yep so you've got the 357 mag which is exceeding the most generous threshold by about 33 percent and a 38 special which doesn't right on hit that. the minimum recommended it's uh, right on that hairy usually. right on that hairy edge one question that comes up quite a bit is you know can you shoot 38 in a 357 revolver the answer is absolutely you can totally safe not a problem the opposite is not true uh, you no. should not do that. And the beautiful thing is uh, Keith actually designed the 357 to be an eighth of an inch longer, so you couldn't put a 357 mag in a 38 Special Revolver. Shooting 38 Special in a 357, you might wonder why you do it, because you got this, this bigger, more powerful revolver. Why are you choosing more anemic ammo for it? It's great because 38 Special was a little cheaper, yep. and when you're just shooting targets, when you're just plinking in the backyard, that much less recoil, it's kind of nice. It really is. It makes your life so much easier uh, when you're shooting something that's less recoil. You're not going to have as much, uh, you know, flinch when you pull the trigger or rather mm -hmm. when, I should say when you squeeze the trigger. And, and most people will find that they're more accurate uh, with that lower recoiling ammunition. And that's because it's just more comfortable to shoot. But yeah, the 38 Special Plus P, like we talked about earlier, there's a whole lot of empty case space in there. And that's, of course, what Elmer Keith, you know, utilized to make the 357 Magnum, but that gives a lot of flexibility in the 38 Special as well. And so with the more, you know, the stronger frames and things like that uh, that were built for 38 Plus P, you're looking at about mm, about a 14% increase uh, in pressure goes up about 14% and your muzzle velocity jumps up about 32%. Uh, so it's definitely got a little bit more power to it, but it's still not on the same level as the 357 Magnum. Yeah, but incidentally, 38 Special Plus P does fall within uh, that close ranges at least, that yes. 220 to 300 foot pound kinetic energy on impact. Uh, Absolutely, no. Like, that you want. Yeah, like 125 grain plus P, looking right around uh, 264 foot pounds of energy, which is right in that sweet spot, just short of a thousand feet per second, uh, and that will definitely get the job done. Now, there are some other, you know, pretty fancy loads that you may or may not be able to find. Uh, there's one that was referred to as the FBI load, uh, yes. which is a 38 special plus P. Uh, but the uh, the FBI wanted to use a specialized lead semi wad color cutter hollow point round uh, instead uh, of a jacketed hollow point, uh, and they liked it uh, for some reason, uh, and they were using that uh, for a while. And then then the big one, what is referred to as the Treasury Load, otherwise known as the 38 Special Plus P Plus. Now this this bad boy is gonna kick. Uh, a little bit more now not as bad as the 357 but this one's still pretty potent sitting at about a 28 percent increase over standard 38 special ammo sitting right at about 22,000 psi and uh, can push 110 grain jacketed hollow point at about 1200 feet per second from a four inch barrel uh, that's uh, nothing to to snuff at and you only lose about 100 feet per second when you drop down to a two inch barrel that that plus b plus round is running pretty hot uh, to that end, 357 Magnum plus P is not, uh, that exists too, we got to point it out. You can find it, uh, you won't find, you'll find it for custom loaders. One of the things we, we touched on a little bit earlier, cost, 38 Special is going to be cheaper no matter what. Yeah, less brass, less lead, less propellant, less everything. Exactly. So, you know, when you're going out to the range to practice, you know, we we're talking about earlier shooting that 38 special in a 357 revolver. It's a great way to practice with your carrier revolver and not, you know, hit you so much in the in the wallet as well, not as hitting the hand so much on the recoil. Let's talk the big one, right? The, the self-defense and concealed carry. This is one that everyone uh, harps on, and I think we would be remiss if we didn't at least touch on it for a minute. Um, what are your thoughts, Dave, is carrying 38 versus 357? Gotta be honest, uh, I, I carry a 38 special, and uh, it's great. The gun is so light mm -hmm. that I don't even notice it poking into my uh, 
into my 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 soft, perfectly toned belly. <laughs> uh, three fifty seven. It's 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 a hammerless little gun. It's just tiny. Mm-hmm. That said, we were talking about this before the podcast. I'm really bothered by the uh, the five shot cylinder capacity. If I were going to make a move up to a a larger handgun, I don't think it would be a three fifty seven because that's that's a fairly significant chunk of steel, and you only gain one extra round in the cylinder for it. And a whole lot more recoil. And this is one thing that I, I talk about a lot when, you know, I'm training a new shooter and things like that. They always like, like oh, I want to go with a small gun for concealed carry. There's mm-hmm. a trade-off with that. When you have, you know, a smaller gun, it's going to be lighter weight, which means the recoil is going to be heavier. Now, I'm not saying we all got to get out there and carry like a, you know, a full four-inch revolver, uh, if that's your, th- you, your thing. You want to carry like all steel, 357, you know, four-inch revolver. You can. It's going to be a bear to try and, uh, you know, conceal that thing. Uh, but it really is a trade-off. Now, when you move down to that lightweight revolver with the 357 Magnum, oh, we're getting to the point where it hurts to shoot that. And that, in my opinion, is a big problem. And revolver versus semi-auto, now there's a whole podcast in and of itself. But, oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, that, yeah. That's a choice you're making by picking either of these rounds for self-defense. Dave, let's go ahead and wrap it up here. What are your final thoughts on 38 and 357? Honestly, for everyday carry, I'm, I'm still kind of inclined towards 38 Special. For, for, all its, for all its shortcomings, you're getting that smaller revolver. Uh, I know comfort while training is important, but to me, concealability is even more important. Oh, yeah. Especially in this era where if someone sees you printing in public, they might try to make a big stake about it and ruin mm-hmm. your day. I like going really subtle with my everyday carry. Uh, that said, I love the 357. I love how noisy it is, powerful recoil. It's just uh, it's just a beautiful piece of machinery. And since we're not talking about 44 Magnum, I can say it's uh, it's my preferred revolver to actually fire and train with. Dave, I have to agree with you. 38 Special will get the job done for you, regardless whether it's plus P or not, so long as your shot placement is where it needs to be. 357, I think, is a great home defense round. Uh, and if you're a recoil junkie like Dave, then you know you can go and train with that, uh, but still carry your 38, and you're going to be more than ready for any situation that may find you out there in the concrete jungle. I don't think we could have put it any better than that, Chris. I'm I agree hungry. with you. I agree. So, guys, uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you click that like and subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching. Get your free coupon by clicking on the link in the pinned comment or in the description. And we'll see you out at the range.